haven't seen it, you know, in the Detroit area, you cannot find a copy of issue right. one. Not the reprint, nothing. And uh, so I had to look out and getting issue two, and I read this thing, and I'm like, this would make a great role playing game, especially if we could spin this into having all kinds of different eating animals and stuff, and the turtles being the main thing. And again, how about weird, I get a call on the phone, and it's some freelancer, a fan, who says, hey, have you seen the Ninja Turtle comic? And I'm like, I literally just got done reading it, telling my, 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 my guys, hey, this would make a great game. And uh, I'm like, yeah. He's like, I want to write it. So we talked about what needs to be in it, how we should do it, uh, and how to do it justice. And he had actually made a contact, I believe, with Peter Laird. And uh, so uh, he gives me the number, and I talk to Kevin Pete. They're awesome guys, by the way. You know, what happened in, with, with the Ninja Turtles and them making gazillions of dollars could not happen to two nicer people. Uh, in fact, Home Arise Studio was just wonderful guys to work with. Um, so uh, I think I first started talking to Kev, and we hit it off instantly. And he turned me over to Pete, who was a little older, I think, handled more of the business end of things. And uh, it, it was hilarious, because they were totally new to this, and we had only been around for like four or five years uh, at the time. So, uh, and so by the way, licenses don't happen like this normally. So they're like, hey, we like you. Um, we think you do good stuff. Um, why don't you throw together a licensing agreement and, and we'll look it over. And so I did. And they like, yeah, it looks fine. And they signed it. We <laughs> were like the second Ninja Turtle license on the planet. The first one was a miniature company called Dark Horse, which no longer exists. No relationship to the Caliper company. And uh, oh, I tend to think we were the first license. But Kevin Pete insists otherwise. But, <laughs> and so to give you an idea, and this, this is funny too, I'm, I'm talking to Kevin on the phone one day about stuff that he's contributing, because we thought, like, here's one of the things of licensing. I think a lot of people think that when you do, when you get a licensed property, that the name is going to sell. And what the name does, it'll get people to look at it. And then you need to deliver. And if you don't give people a product that they're expecting and give them the characters that they know and love, you're gonna tank. You see it all the time with Hollywood movies, not so much with comic book movies nowadays, because they kind of figured out, hey, if this is Spider-Man, you should probably look and act like Spider-Man. <laughs> um, and, and so they do, finally. But think about how many movies came out before that where you're like, well, it's kind of the like superhero I know and love, or it's kind of an adaptation of a book I know and love. But I mean, hell, you know, World War uh, Z is a great example of, you know, the name of the book, all similarities to the product, and it's there. You know, it's, it was a damn good movie, but it's not World War Z. So, we, uh, I'm talking to Pete and Pete Cav, and all of a sudden, they're like, oh my god, Kev, we gotta go! And I'm like, what, what, what is it? And they're like, it's starting to rain! And I'm like, so? No, no, issue number three is in the driveway, we gotta get into the garage! <laughs> So, and, and that was sort of the fun thing with uh, dealing with, with Kevin and Peter with Ninja Turtles is Palladium Books and the Turtle Guys, we were, we were both pretty small and green and, and we grew together. Of course, they super took off. And uh, yeah, Ninja Turtles was great to work with. Those guys um, got out of our way and let us do what we needed to do. They were wonderful input and information. Um, you know, they illustrated the first four or five books, and then other guys in the studio, Jim Lawson and others, contributed other books, and it was just a blast. And at one point, uh, early on, um, I was ranting about one of the covers that him and Peter Laird had done, and, uh, uh, and I figured whether it was Kevin or Pete says, uh, yeah, I don't get it, Kevin. You get the best work out of us. And I'm like, well, that's cool. He goes, no, you don't understand. I mean, shouldn't we be doing the best work for ourselves? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I don't know how to, what to tell you there. So, uh, um, and that was just, just a lot of fun. And uh, um, Harmony Gold, looking at Harmony Gold and other licenses were much more um, business oriented. And that's the thing, especially as Hollywood and comic books and everything has expanded. For a lot of these guys, it's really all about money. 
that's not the case with Harmony Gold, but for a lot of studios, they don't know their property, they don't like their property, necessarily like their property. There's, it's all about the bottom line, what can you bring to it? And then sometimes they have really weird views. Um, so like with Harmony Gold, they were really good to work with, although at some point when Carl left the company in, in the mid 80s, um, we were just kind of left uh, out cold, like, like they babes in the wood, which on one hand you would think is kind of fun because you have all this creative freedom, but we wanted to be loyal and true to the property. When we, when Palladium Books gets a license, we want it to be a beautiful, accurate translation of the property that we know and love. 